I'm gonna read something that justifies my existence till this very day. No one should suffer or be a martyr in this world, but um, when coincidences are way too much and you are partially autist, you are an autistic person, then, then coincidence seems to be reality as much as reality as you have in the hands of an old person of 80 years old and a face that looks a bit young according to you, your age and seems like you're going backwards because you're finding out everything about your own existence and every single day that you managed to survive your violence was daily it was present it was destroying you every day and when, when it was too much it was trauma Yeah, you could have never ever figured it out because you're partially autist. I've opened the Bible today, going through one of the hardest moments of my life, and I picked up, not by coincidence, this chapter. So I will read it. If my English and my autism allows it, it means everything. Act Bible, the Holy Bible, Act Chapter 9. The soul is still breathing, frets in murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem now as he went on his way he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground he heard a voice saying to him soul soul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you Lord and he said I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with them stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. The cell rose on the ground and although his eyes were opened he saw nothing so they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus and for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drunk Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. 
and he said here I am Lord and the Lord said to him rise and go to the street called straight and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul for behold he is praying and he has seen in a vision a man named named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so there he might regain his sight but Ananias answered Lord I have heard from many about this man how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name but the Lord said to him go for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel for I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name so Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hand on him he said brother Saul the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight then he rose and he was baptized and thank you for the your strength For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately they proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and say, is not this man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who call upon his name? And has he not come here for this purpose? To bring them bound before the chief priests? But so increase all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proven that Jesus was the Christ. For many days has passed. Many days have passed. They just plotted to kill him. But the plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening in a wall, lowering him in a basket. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. And they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he has seen the Lord who spoke to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus so he went in and out among 
them at Jerusalem preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists. But they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church thought all today in Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. Walking in fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they multiplied. Yes. Now, as Peter went here, and there were more than more, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lida. They found a man named Anis. He dragged him for eight years who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Anias, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. Immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lida and Shaul saw him. And they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Job a disciple named Dabita, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had to wash her, they laid her in. They laid her in an upper room. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and all the garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all aside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise! And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the sons and widows, he presented her life. And it became known as a red old job. And many believed in it, Lord. Many believed in the Lord, in the mighty, the holy Lord, the holy Father. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tenor. Em nome do Pai, do Filho e do Espírito Santo, amém. Ave Maria, cheia de graça, o Senhor é convosco. Bendito sois vós entre as mulheres, e bendito o fruto do vosso ventre, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, rogai por nós pecadores, agora e na hora de nossa morte. Amém. Glória ao Pai, ao Filho e ao Espírito Santo.
o que foi ontem. Que sempre seja, em nome do Pai, 